Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Okay, we are going to start with the session number three. Uh, we are almost done with the first week of this course. So we are going to continue with the information and uh, with the exercises and all of the things that we have for this week. Uh, today we are going to uh, talk about a grammatical topic. So in this case, uh, we are going to talk about something uh related to structures um i know that this topic is not going to be something um very difficult for you uh, we are going to talk about uh this topic just a review but also we are going to talk about this topic um to remember different uh, forms to uh, talk about the activities that we do in our um, life. And also with this topic, we are going to make uh, like different activities and we are going to have an exercise. And it is not the same kind of exercise in which you need to uh, complete some uh, statements or you need to um, like found the piece that is missing on those uh, sentences. In this case, we are going to construct. And we are going to construct something uh, from nothing. Vamos a construir algo de la nada con esa estructura que vamos a estudiar eh, hoy. But let me... Let me chart the platform and also let me go to the document because we are going to work on this topic. But first we need to listen some information that is related to the topics that we were developing and the topics that we are going to develop in this session. Remember that we are going to continue with section number two because in this week we are going to complete section number one and section number two also. And we have one knowledge check left and then we have an activity that is not like a knowledge check because we are not going to submit anything, but this is an activity that we are going to do. We are going to begin with the knowledge check that is the 1.11. I know that some of you, um, already has this part, but I know that there are some people that um, is working on this exercise. So we are going to make the review of the 1.11. And then we are going to read the last part that is related to exercise. And we are going to understand how healthy we are. And I say in how healthy because this quiz is related to health. Vamos a ver más o menos de qué trata el 1.11 y luego vamos a hacer la última parte, que este sí lo vamos a hacer en el momento, ¿verdad? Vamos a tratar de leer, contestar, sumar y dar un resultado al quiz, que es el último que encontramos en la plataforma, que yo sé que muchos de ustedes ya vieron, que es básicamente un ejercicio aparte. No vamos a enviar, ¿verdad? Una respuesta y que nos va a dar una puntuación. No, esto es básicamente para entender cómo vamos nosotros con nuestra salud. But we are going to begin with the 1.11. So give me a second. Um, I have here the 1.11. Okay. 
in this one, we have the knowledge check that is a, the last knowledge check that we have here on the section number one. And is this one. Complete the following questions. Guide yourself with the answers. Choose from how often, how well, how good, and how long. This is related to the topic of the word how and how to create this kind of questions. I know that I didn't write the other examples that I said yesterday on the document, but don't worry, you are going to have all the, that information uh, on the document. So don't think about that part, but I'm going to do it later. Entonces, vamos a completar las preguntas y vamos a ver la respuesta y vamos a escoger entre how often, how well, how good, and how long. Solo tenemos cuatro partes acá. Cuatro de estas. Y en la primera tenemos a the volleyball. Ya vemos que está hablando de un deporte. I guess I pretty good. I often play on weekends. En la segunda, spent online. Estamos hablando del tiempo en línea. About an hour after dinner, I like to chat with my friends. Number three, play cards. We're talking about a game. Estamos hablando de un juego, no de un deporte, sino de un juego. Once or twice a month, it is a good way to relax. Type, estamos hablando de escribir, ¿verdad? De... de Introducir caracteres, ya sea en una computadora, en una máquina. And it says, not very well. Actually, I need to take a typing class. Dice que no es muy bueno, muy buena, porque necesita tomar una clase, ¿verdad? De escritura o de tipeo. So, based on the answers, number one is related to how often, how well, how good, or how long. Okay, I have an answer here. How good? How good, okay. We are going to see the other answer. Ah, don't worry, I understand that. So, someone said how good. We are going to write here how good. Okay, next one. We're talking about time. Which one is related to time? How often, how well, how good, and how long? How long. Okay, how long? Number three, play cards. Estamos hablando de un juego. How often, how well, how good, and how long? How often. How often, okay. Y la última. Pues ya tenemos how good, how long, how often. Solo nos quedaría entonces how well. We can guess that. I mean, well. Um, and teacher, tell me. Uh, in one, how good do you do you add volleyball? No. How good do you? Yes or no? So only how good. Ok, en este caso, mmm, vamos a, eh, podríamos decir que nos falta algo. How good are you? Maybe. ¿Qué tan bueno eres? Podríamos eh, utilizar esa parte. How good are you at volleyball? ¿Qué tan bueno eres en volleyball? Vamos a ver cómo nos sale. Vamos a chequearlas primero. Eso lo podemos arreglar. Vamos a ver cómo nos salen las primeras eh, respuestas. Ok, tenemos una buena nada más, que es la que nos decía Cindy que le faltaba algo, ¿verdad? Entonces, ¿qué podemos hacer con las otras? Agregarle el do you. Ok, vamos a ver. How long do you spend online? How often do you play cards? And how well do you type? Ok, vamos a ver. Mm, oh, una mala. ¿Qué podríamos agregarle a how well? 
Teacher, se podría cambiar como How do you wear tight? Mm. Ok, en este caso, how do you will? I think it is not. How will? Are you? Are you? Maybe. Vamos a ver. No. Nope. Maybe, uh, where are you? Mm, no, that is incorrect. Esa es la que tenemos ahorita. How well are you type? Podría ser, can you? you? Ah, how well can you? Can you? That's correct. Very good. ¿Qué también puedes tú escribir o ¿Verdad? En la computadora o en la máquina. Eh, de escribir, porque aquí estamos hablando de eh, escribir, ¿verdad? En un dispositivo. Entonces, número uno. How good are you? ¿Qué tan bueno eres tú en voleibol? Número dos. How long do you spend online? ¿Qué tanto tiempo o cuánto tiempo eh, gastas o estás en línea? How often do you play cards? ¿Qué tan seguido juegas a las cartas? And how well can you type? ¿Qué tan bien puedes escribir? So in that case, we have this word correct. For the ones that are working on this part, you can go to the uh, platform and write the questions or the words that you have there. Pero los que están trabajando ahorita que van por la 1.11, Pueden hacerlo en este momento, eh, escribir, ¿verdad? Las respuestas, sacar una screenshot, escribir por ahí, ¿verdad? Cuáles son las respuestas para que ustedes puedan ir eh, escribiendo en el ejercicio lo que les hace falta. I'm going to give you like one, two, three, four, five seconds. And we are going to move to the other activity. Okay, the next thing that we are going to do, uh, I was saying it is not like um, an exercise itself. It, this one is just to think about the activities that we perform in order to be healthy. Estas son actividades que nosotros hacemos o que hacemos nosotros para estar saludables. En esta actividad nosotros vamos a vernos a nosotros mismos. No es el ejercicio en sí. No vamos a ver si le falta un verbo, un adjetivo, un adverbio. We are going to think about ourselves and the things that we do to um, be the best version ourselves. En este caso vamos a leer el ejercicio y vamos a tomar apuntes. Vamos a ir tomando apuntes y vamos a hacer una sumatoria para al final ver eh, cuál es el resultado de ese ejercicio. Y me voy a mover para acá porque es un poco más cómodo verlo de esta manera. Um, we are going to try to do it like this. Para que sea más cómodo de ver. This one is a reading exercise. It is related to health and fitness and it is a quiz. Es un eh, pequeño examen, ¿verdad? Un, una evaluación sobre salud y sobre cómo estamos nosotros con el ejercicio. And it says, how healthy and fit do you think you are? Skim the questions below, then guess your health and fitness score from zero to 55. Zero is very unhealthy and 55 is very healthy. Vamos a leer las preguntas, vamos a leer las respuestas, vamos a tomar los puntos y vamos a hacer la suma. Empezamos con cero, que estamos muy poco saludables, que no creo. Y 55, que es muy saludable. Entonces vamos a ver cuál es el rango que nosotros tenemos en este quiz. Ahora, con esta parte, we have um, 11 questions. 
And we have here the rate of the points. Tenemos los puntos al final. Y ahí vamos a ir viendo cuál es el resultado. So I'm going to put this image here. And after a couple of minutes, you can do from one to five and seven to 11. And then you can have number six at the end. But you are going to have this question here. You are going to mark the points. Solo van a ir poniendo los puntos para poderlo sumar. Y luego vamos a hablar un poco de cuál fue el resultado que nos dio. To do this exercise, we're going to have um, like five or six minutes to read the questions, to read the answers, and to mark the points. So we're going to begin with this part. And then at 8.20, I'm going to move to the question number six because we have one question left. Así que vamos a comenzar a marcar nuestros puntos para ver cómo estamos en cuestión de salud. So let's begin with the exercise.
Okay, I think that you have the answer already. So we are going to do something. We are going to share the uh, the points that we have at the end of the exercise. And we are going to write the points on the chat. Vamos a tratar de poner los puntos ya sumados en el chat. Vamos a escribir los puntos que nos dio al final, la sumatoria de las preguntas. And we are going to read every um, detail of the points that we have. So in this case, you are going to write the points on the chat of the... Um, the end of this exercise. So we are going to do it right now to read the um, the final thoughts about the exercise about the hill. Así que vamos a escribir los puntos en el chat para poder leer la última parte o la parte final de nuestro ejercicio. So let's do it. Okay, I have one, two, oh wow. Mm -hmm. I'm going to wait for the others. And then we are going to begin reading the, the final part. Um, you cannot see the, the screen, uh, you cannot see the, the, the exercise on the screen. No, don't worry. You can send the answers on the chat. Solo tienen que enviar el número aquí en el chat porque esa parte es nada más para que nosotros le hagamos la lectura y eh, leamos las respuestas aquí mismo. Oh, wow. Okay, we are going to begin with the points. Let's see, we have 37, 37 puntos. And it is on the second place and it says, good, your health and fitness are above average. Está so encima de la media, encima de el promedio, ¿verdad? Entonces quiere decir que estamos llevando eh, un buen sistema, pero que podemos seguir mejorando de a poco. But that's very, very good. Then we have 42, 42, excellent, uh, I mean, it isn't the same. Good, your health and fitness are above average. Está siempre por encima de el promedio. Next one, 33, in the same, your health and fitness are above average. We have 21, 21. Your health and fitness are a little below average. Está un poco más bajo del promedio. No es algo malo, pero sí podría mejorar un poco. Next one. And this one is the highest of the highest. Este es el más alto de todos, que es el 55. And it says, excellent job. Keep up the good work. Está sobre eh, encima del promedio, está llevando un muy buen sistema de ejercicio y de salud. So, that's impressive. Again, 21, it is um, below the average. We have 30, 53, también está del, del más alto, ¿verdad? El 55, 53, que están haciendo un excelente trabajo con su salud y con el ejercicio. And in my case, I am above the average with 34 points, 34. 
but in this case it's because um I work with children so in this case I don't have like enough time to be uh sitting in the same place because I need to uh work with them and run with them and jump with them and do a lot of things so for me that is my my exercise and it is kind of kind of kind of hard but we can say that we are above the average thanks to the children okay and this is just to know how are we with these kind of topics and also because we were talking about sports and we were talking about activities and we were talking about the advert of frequency and this is the end of the second i mean the first a section of the platform ese es el final de la primera sección ahora vamos a comenzar con la sección 2 and in the section 2 we are going to talk about the um, grammatical topics and in this case we are going to talk about tenses vamos a hablar de tiempos and what is this? Uh, we are talking about the hour. We are talking about the minutes. No, we are going to talk about a specific moments in life. And in this uh, section, we are going to talk about past. Vamos a hablar del pasado. Por eso es que estamos diciendo que hablamos de tiempos. Hablamos del pasado. Entonces nos vamos a enfocar más que todo en el pasado. Y vamos a empezar con una conversación. So we are going to listen a conversation that is called, did you do anything? And then we are going to listen another information that is related to simple past. And listening these two uh, informations, we are going to talk about something about the past tense. Vamos a escuchar estas dos informaciones. Una, la conversación. Y la segunda, el video de información sobre el simple past. Y luego vamos a hablar un poco sobre la construcción de oraciones en simple past. Tanto en presente, I mean, tanto en positivo, en negativo y en pregunta. Y también vamos a hacer una actividad. But this one is a very um, unique activity because you are going to construct something based on a verb. Ustedes me van a construir algo, pero cada uno de ustedes va a tener un verbo en específico. Y obviamente yo les voy a dar un verbo en presente y ustedes se lo van a construir a pasado y lo van a utilizar para construir algo. But we are going to begin with the conversation. That is the first part that we are going to do. So let's listen. Did you do anything special? And I need to share the screen with you. So give me a moment. Okay, here we have conversation. So let's pay attention. Hi to all. Welcome to section seven. We had a great time. In this session, participants will listen to a conversation between two people and the activities they did last weekend. This conversation will walk us through activities that took place in the past. I really need you to concentrate as we'll begin to study simple past. As you listen to the conversation, write down all the verbs in the past you can identify. Did you do anything special? So, what did you do last weekend, Meg? Oh, I had a great time. I went to a karaoke bar and sang with some friends on Saturday. That sounds like fun. Did you go to Lucky's? No, we didn't. We went to that new place downtown. How about you? Did you go anywhere? No, I didn't go anywhere all weekend. I just stayed home and studied for today's Spanish test. Our Spanish test is today? I forgot all about that. Don't worry. You always get an A. Did you go anywhere? No. Okay, we have here this conversation and it's pretty funny because they are talking about different things and at the end she forgets to do something. So we have a Rick and Meg that they are talking about the things that they did the last weekend. 
So in this case, we're going to focus on the structure that they are using to express the activities that they did because we are using the auxiliary word did. So the first question, what did you do last weekend? ¿Qué hiciste el pasado fin de semana? What did you do? Oh, I had, here we have another instructor with the past. I had a great time. I went to a karaoke bar and sang with some friends on Saturday. That sounds like fun. Did you go to Lucky's? No, we didn't. We went to that new place downtown. How about you? Did you go anywhere? No, I didn't go anywhere all weekend. I just stayed home and studied for today's Spanish test. Our Spanish test is today. I forgot all about that. Don't worry, you always get an A. So in this conversation, we have two different kind of people. One is the people that likes to go outside, the people that like to go out and have fun. And then we have the other person that prefers to stay home and study, read, watch a movie, do something in, in house. But in this case, we're seeing the structure or the form in which they are like expressing the things that they did on the weekend. And we see that we are using different verbs, different actions, but in past. In this case, we have the auxiliary did, we have um, had, we have went, we have sung, we have a um, went, mm, didn't, that is the, the, the negative form, stayed, studied, I forgot, and all of that. So in this case, we have a lot of verbs that are in past. Aquí vemos una conversación sencilla eh, que nosotros podríamos tener en cualquier momento de nuestra vida. No es algo muy científico, muy eh, rebuscado, podríamos decir, sino eh, nos encontramos con un amigo y platicamos sobre qué hizo cada quien el fin de semana. Y así como es esta construcción de esta conversación, Así podríamos hacerlo nosotros, explicar qué hicimos el fin de semana. Oh, what did you do last weekend? Ah, I, I stayed home and I read some books and also I watched a movie because I feel um, kind of sick. Or we can say, oh, I went to the beach and I... Um, uh, had a great time with my family. I eat a lot of, I mean, I ate a lot of uh, seafood and different kind of things that we did on the weekend. Entonces es algo bastante sencillo, algo que nosotros podríamos hacer fácilmente en una conversación con algún amigo o compañero de trabajo o algún conocido, ¿verdad? Now we are going to listen the second video in which we have the information of the structure. This one is the grammatical part. Aquí ya vamos entrando estructuras, gramática, información sobre este, um, este tense o este tiempo. And we are going to make like a review after the video. Solo vamos a hacer como un pequeño review Después del video de qué fue lo que se dijo, algunas estructuras específicas. Vamos a tratar de escribir algunas estructuras en el documento para recordarlas. Porque básicamente nosotros ya sabemos cómo trabajar con el pasado. But in this case, we're just going to remember the structures. And then we have the activity. So let's pay attention to the information on the video. It is 2 minutes, 22 seconds. So it is not very long. Class questions and answers will be introduced. Irregular and regular verbs will also be taught. Welcome back. So now it's time to study past tense. For us to succeed learning it, we need to learn verbs in simple past. We'll teach you how to make questions and how to answer in both affirmative and negative form. Please pay attention. Simple past. Did you work on Saturday? Yes, I did. I worked all day. 
No, I didn't. I didn't work at all. Did you go anywhere last weekend? Yes, I did. I went to the movies. No, I didn't. I didn't go anywhere. What did Rick do on Saturday? He stayed home and studied for a test. How did Meg spend her weekend? She went to a karaoke bar and sang with some friends. Let's talk about questions in simple past. Did you realize the auxiliary we used? Did. We use auxiliary did for questions and short answers, positive and negative. Did you realize what happened to the question after we used did? See the next example. Did you go to the beach? Did he break the window? In each question, the verb is used in simple present because we use did. It is not correct to say, did you went to the beach? Did he broke the window? So remember, every time you ask a question in simple past, you need to use the auxiliary did and the main verb goes back to present. For short answers in affirmative and negative in simple past, we must use did within the answer as we saw on the chart. Yes, I did. No, I didn't. This takes us to say that we use verbs in simple past when we say affirmative sentences. Take a look at the following statements. They went to the park last weekend. I woke up late this morning. She came late to class. I suggest for you to study and learn verbs in simple past for you to express past activities and experiences. Okay, in this case, we are just talking about the auxiliary did. That is a very important part of the past tense. Um, and it's saying that when we are using the auxiliary, you know that when we are using auxiliaries in general, the auxiliary is helping me to give information to the person that I'm talking with, or even it is giving information to me. Because the auxiliary is telling me in which tense, in which time I am talking. And in this case, when I am using the auxiliary did, I know that I am uh, talking in past or I am using uh, structures in past. And I know that if I have the auxiliary, then my main verb is going to be in present. That is the part of this one. And also when I am using auxiliaries in present, for example, I know that I am not going to apply the uh, rule to the third person uh, singular, because in that case, the auxiliary already has that function. Los auxiliares pues nos ayudan, ¿verdad? A entender qué tiempo, qué estructura eh, estamos utilizando nosotros al hablar. Cuando utilizamos el auxiliar, en presente y lo estamos utilizando con la tercera persona he, she, it yo sé que si yo ocupo el auxiliar has en ese caso yo ya no voy a utilizar el verbo eh, con la regla de la tercera persona ya no le voy a agregar s y s s a ese verbo sino que mi auxiliar ya está haciendo esa función lo mismo sucede con el, el pasado Did es mi auxiliar, básicamente solo me va a ayudar a entender que yo estoy eh, hablando de algo en pasado. Y mi verbo principal ya no se va a utilizar en pasado, ya no lo voy a poner en pasado, sino que mi, eh, I mean, my, my main verb is not going to be in past, sino que mi auxiliar ya está tomando esa función. Mi auxiliar ya absorbió esa, um, esa parte y ya no es necesario volver a poner el verbo principal en pasado. Entonces, con eso tenemos que recordar siempre. Si yo llevo un auxiliar, ya no necesito cambiar mi verbo. But in this case, we are just going to have the um, structures for the different parts of the statements. In this case, we are going to talk about positive, um, negative, and in question. Because in, on the video, you just have some information related to the questions. But I'm moving to the document right now because we are going to add that information there. But I don't know why this one is very small. Oh, that's very good.
And we have here this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we are going to just write the structure. It's not necessary that we talk about um, the whole thing about the past because we already know that. What is the function of the past? Simple past, and we are going to talk about uh, structures. Okay, in this case, we already know that the simple um the simple past in this case is used to show that a completed action took place a specific time in the past the simple past is also frequently used to talk about past habits and generalizations okay in this case remember when you have a complete action you are going to use the simple past in this case we cannot Remember, we cannot use action that is going to happen in the present or it has to be with present. In this case, it's only for actions that end in the past. Son acciones que ya terminaron, que ya no vamos a decir nosotros, ah, puede llegar a suceder en el futuro, puede llegar a continuar, puede volver a renacer. No, son acciones que ya terminaron, inicio, final y ahí murió. Y también podemos hablar sobre hábitos que nosotros teníamos en el pasado o sobre generalidades. And that is the way in which we are going to use this structure. And I'm going to write just, um, just this so part here, just to remember. Um, okay. This one. Okay, this is used to show that a completed action took place at a specific time in the past. And the other one is to talk about past habits and generalizations. Okay. What are the forms? We already know that in the simple um, forms of the verb, we have the uh, irregular and regular forms. In the regular forms, we're just going to add ed at the end. In the irregular verbs, we are going to change the form of the verbs. So in this case, uh, we are going to use the following uh, structures. We can say that uh, we are going to have a positive, simple statements, the following structure. We have the um, subject. We are going to use like this, give me a moment. Subject plus verb, and we have here past, plus complement, and that's it. Because this is a very uh, simple um, statement. Es, un, es una oración simple. Entonces, no nos complicamos con las oraciones simples. Solo va nuestro sujeto, nuestro verbo y nuestro complemento. And that's it. For example, you call your mom. You call your mom. Aquí tenemos el sujeto, luego tenemos nuestro verbo y por último tenemos nuestro complemento. And that's it. It is very simple. Then we can practice with long statements 
but it's almost the same thing. So you are just going to add different elements to complete these long statements. But this is the base um, that we need to remember to create these kind of uh, statements. And in this case, that we are going to uh, use the simple pass to express the idea that an action started and finished at a specific time in the past. And sometimes the speaker may not actually mention the specific time. So it is not necessary to mention the specific time in which this action took place. And with the negative, negative simple statement is the same thing. Bueno, en este caso es casi lo mismo pero solo vamos a agregar un elemento más. We have the subject plus didn't. Aquí vamos a utilizar el auxiliar con la palabra negativa, que es did not or didn't plus the verb. In this one is simple present. And then the complement. And for the questions, we have the auxiliary did plus the subject plus the verb. And in this case, it's the same with the negative form, simple present form plus the complement. In this case, I'm going to use right C plus the question mark. And that's it. They are very, very simple. We are not going to like talk about uh, these structures a lot because it is not necessary. Esas son las estructuras. Esas son las bases de nuestras estructuras que vamos a utilizar para crear oraciones. Como ya les decía, esta es la base. Ya luego podemos hacer oraciones más largas, agregarles más cosas, hacerlas más complejas. Pero esta es la base, base como tal. And let me write two more examples for each one. So we are going to have three examples for uh, positive, for negative, and for questions. I leave. And Brad Seal for two years. They sat at the beach all day. Or negative, we have. They didn't stay at the party the entire time. They did not stay at the party. Give me a moment. I'm going to read that. The entire time. Okay. I didn't see a play yesterday. I didn't see a play yesterday. He didn't wash his car. And for the question, did you have dinner last night? Did 
did you play a musical instrument when you were a kid? In this one, you can see that they are like kind of long statements, but okay, in this case, I have a question. Let me see. Carlos, are you on the group of WhatsApp or you are not on the group? No, oh, that's, I don't know if some of you, no sé si alguno de ustedes podría enviar el enlace al chat del grupo de WhatsApp para que Carlos pueda accesar al grupo. Y así yo más tarde envío el enlace a través del documento para que eh, puedan agregarse al grupo. No sé si alguno de ustedes podría hacerlo en ese momento para eh, que él pueda agregarse y luego yo envío otra vez el enlace del documento. Ok, thank you, Patricia. En ese caso tenemos ahí el enlace, Carlos. No sé si puede accesar para agregarse al grupo de WhatsApp. Y me confirma si ya se pudo uh, agregar para después de la, de la sesión enviar el documento. Okay, very good. You're welcome. Más tarde voy a enviar el, el enlace del documento para que usted ya tenga acceso a él. Okay, and we were saying you were a kid. Did you sleep? Hmm. Did you sleep well last night? And we have here the examples of these uh, questions. Now, I think that we are just going to um, talk about the verbs that we are going to work. En esta actividad que vamos a hacer, eh, básicamente nosotros vamos a tener un verbo en específico. Cada uno de nosotros va a tener un verbo que le pertenece, no todos, o sea, no vamos a tener verbo, los mismos verbos. En este caso vamos a tener verbos diferentes. We are, I mean, you are 10, 10 different people. Ustedes son 10, conmigo 11. Um, y vamos a tener 10 verbos diferentes. Y vamos a crear una pequeña historia. But this one is in past. Es una pequeña historia en pasado. Eh, ¿De qué ustedes deciden sobre qué quieren hablar? Eh, ¿Alguna actividad que ustedes hicieron? Eh, ¿Una historia que les contaron sus hijos? ¿La pueden adaptar, verdad, a este ejercicio? ¿Algo que les pasó en el trabajo? Different kind of topics. But I'm going to show you for a couple of minutes because I don't know if we are going to have like troubles with this um, with this part, but give me a moment. I'm going to show you in which page I'm going to choose your verb. So let me go here and here. Okay, in this one, you can see that we have 15 common verbs and we can uh, choose this one. So I'm going to use or press the, uh, the bottom start and I'm going to have a verb and then I can choose another one. Entonces, en este generador de verbos, yo no sé cuál verbo es el que va a salir, sino que yo le voy a ir dando un verbo a cada uno de ustedes. Yo voy a decir su nombre y voy a decir el verbo que le corresponde. Y usted va a pensar sobre su historia, una historia corta. No es que vamos a escribir nosotros un libro, una historia, un thriller, no. Es una historia corta con 
ese verbo, o sea, utilizando ese verbo dentro de la historia. So, let's begin. So, let's pay attention. Okay. I have the first verb and it is for Marjorie. The verb that you have is the verb feel. El verbo sentir, el verbo feel. Obviamente están en presente. Usted lo va a transformar a pasado y lo va a agregar a su historia. Next one. I have the following verb for Idalia. Idalia, your verb is show. Show, mostrar. Show, obviamente lo transformamos a pasado. Next one. Cindy, your verb is call, llamar, call. For Marina, the verb is talk, hablar, talk. For Patricia, begin. Begin, comenzar. For Pablo, be, ser o estar, be. Oscar, let, let. Dejar. Ok, teacher. Ok, you can begin writing or thinking about your story. Eh, next one. Adriana. Sí. Ver. Sí. Carlos. Send. Enviar. Send. And for Stephanie, we have make, hacer, make. Ahí están nuestros verbos. Entonces, I am saying again the verbs. For Marjorie is feel, for Idalia is show, for Cindy, call, for Marina, talk, Patricia, begin. Pablo, B, Oscar, let, eh, Adriana, C, Carlos, send, and Stephanie, make. So we are going to construct a short story eh, using this verb, but I'm going to add myself. Leave. Ah, okay. That's good. No, it's let, Oscar. Let. Yes, without S. And I'm going to add one more that is mine. You're welcome. And I have the verb work. Oh, work. Trabajar. And I'm going to construct my, my story on that work. Okay, so we're just going to think about this story and we're going to express that story tomorrow because it's already time to end the session. So at the beginning of the session, we are going to say this story that we create with these verbs. If you have, um, like questions or you need help, you can write to the group and we are going to try to answer the questions that we have there. So, vamos a trabajar en nuestra pequeña historia para mañana. Vamos a pensar nuestra historia utilizando esa palabra y la vamos a decir el día de mañana al inicio de la sesión. So, we are going to end the session here and we are going to see each other tomorrow. So, have a really good night and see you tomorrow. Good night. 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 Good night.